Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> Last, we have Tim Eatman, um, who is who, who is co-director of Imagining America. Is this on? Yeah. Co-director of Imagining America, which is currently based at Syracuse. It's an itinerant institute. It started five years ago, or, or more than that ago, in Michigan. Spent five years there, five years at Syracuse, and then five somewhere else in 2017. Awesome. All right. <laughs> I got it kind of right. <laughs> You'll correct me. And, and part of what Imagining America does is, is it um, reinforces and uses um, and, and encourages public scholarship that draws on arts, uh, humanities, and design. Um, and he's done this work here and also, at, in, uh, most recently, also in South Africa. So, Tim Eaton. Good evening. So, I want to thank uh, Nancy Thomas and Peter Levain, uh, Matt Lenier, and all of the colleagues who have come together to put uh, this tremendous conference uh, in motion. Uh, certainly, the TIS College of Citizenship and Public Service. And uh, it's been privileged, really, to be uh, here among such an impressive group of solid citizens. You are uh, leaders of thought as well as action in the field. So while I had heard about Frontiers, this is my first time attending. Uh, I was pleased to be invited last year, but as Matt said, I was unable to attend because I was in South Africa. Uh, consulting with the university uh, there about its community engagement enterprise. Nancy assured me that she would reach out again, and she did. And uh, you know, when we connected for our orientation conversation, I was excited to learn more about this innovative conference model. In fact, uh, I caught some of the live web stream last evening uh, when I arrived in town, just as Peter was describing its form and content. Uh, he suggested that I might have been the only one watching the web stream. But. <laughs> So, of course, all of this resonates uh, with me powerfully. Some of you know that Imagining America, Artists and Scholars in Public Life, uh, the national consortium that I have the uh, privilege to serve as uh, faculty co-director with Scott Peters, uh, also makes every effort to provide a fresh and different kind of approach to academic conferencing. Uh, perhaps some of you will be able to join us at our uh, annual conference upcoming October 9 through 11 at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. Our theme for this year is organizing, period, culture, period, change. So Nancy told me about the theme, topics, expected participants, logistics. She indicated that I could talk about whatever I wanted to. She urged me to be creative, uh, as I wanted to be. Uh, I warned her that that could be dangerous. And she informed me about uh, the live web stream. And then she told me I had 10 minutes. <laughs> so I didn't know. <laughs> Th thank you. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Did you want to come up? And <laughs> All right. At first, I thought she was either being cruel or kidding. But having had the opportunity to uh, view the very compelling batch of presenters last evening, uh, in the web stream. I know that it is possible. I salute those presenters and the ones that have just gone uh, before me. So, with a fifth of my time already gone, <laughs> let's dig in. I have titled this short take, Center of the Civic. And I have one simple point to make, really. Are you ready? It may seem sophomoric to some, so don't judge me. My few minutes revolve around the following posit. Truly seeing and responding to the urgent needs of others is at the center of the civic. As undoubtedly you all well know, the term civic, commonly used in reference to community-wide systems and processes, stems etymologically from the Latin civicus and is grounded in notions of deep human connectedness, indeed of life and death. It hearkens to the 15th century practice when a circular wreath or garland of oak, a civic, a corona civica was awarded to one who saved the life of a fellow, fellow citizen in battle. This powerful expression of care and protection 
affirms the best of what it means to live together in community, to be in fellowship, to advance in coll a, a, a collective ethos in order to sustain shared values and goals that support health and growth in a society. You know, I often struggle with the prevailing contemporary connotation of civic, which signals ways of engaging issues and processes and even texts that tend to supplant visceral, organic, community-grounded realities and dynamics. Revisiting the etymology of civic may prove a useful prompt toward raising our collective consciousness about community engagement aspects of the civic. What lies at the center of a thing really matters. My daughter Jasmine is a rising sophomore in the bio pre-med degree program at Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. She just had the wonderful opportunity of a six-week summer medical internship at the University of Virginia. So this was a real deal, you know, cadavers and all, right? In one of our many conversations during the program, I remember being powerfully struck by something she said. She said, Poppy, today I was holding a brain in my left hand and a heart in my right, and I know that medicine is what I really want to do. Jasmine aspires to a career in obstetrics, specializing in women's reproductive health options in under-resourced communities. She communicated in her comments something about what lies at the center. Like many parents would be, I was pleased to see her continuing the process of clarifying her purpose. And that especially, it does not, at, at least at this point, revolve entirely around money making, but publicly engaged work. Obviously, things are much more complex than that. She also happens to be a ballerina. But the aspiration for making a difference through medicine is an important part of her center. And our, our, our interaction got me to thinking about my own center. If one were to open me up and have a look inside, I believe that I've missed all the stress and the challenges. They would find a song at my center. Yes, a song. For those who uh, only know me as a scholar, I am officially using this short take to come out as a musician and a songwriter. There are a, a few things, just a few things more compelling to me than being in that creative space where I can make music, exploring sound and lyric to engender expressions that capture special moments, affirm salient experiences, and or punctuate important aspects of life. Perhaps this is one of the reasons why uh, I find the community of publicly engaged scholars and practitioners with the Imagining American Network so compelling, focusing on the methods and approaches that emanate from the cultural disciplines, arts, humanities, and design fields is so commonplace within the flow of our work and interactions. I believe that this cognizance of the power of culture making holds for social transformation and is a special aspect of, tent of attending to the center of the civic. So that's why we talk about IAS, creating spaces within the academy where hearts and spirits meet minds to generate and sustain deep, impactful knowledge making and healing. And I know at least three of those words turn off most academics. Spirit, heart, mind, health, right? Knowledge. <laughs> that, was, that was really good. So in the spirit of Nancy's invitation to be creative, I want to share a short original song and briefly reflect as I end. Creating spaces, rebuilding places, Pushing the boundaries of ivory towers. She moves. She listens. She writes. She wrongs. She moves with conviction. The fight is on. 
Pushing the needles, absorbing the pains With the freedom and focus of a dancer Who really knows the winding path she takes Pressing for full participation She moves, she listens She writes, she wrongs, she moves with conviction the fight is on she moves she's moving farewell so long i ap i appreciate your kind encouragement but whether or not you liked my song Clearly you know that I am not the conference entertainment. I'd need a much better singing skill for that. Nor is it my purpose to emphasize who the song was written for. I will not even name her here. Indeed, anyone who knows almost anything about me uh, knows uh, who it is. They could guess. I intended it to be an homage to a truly great leader in American higher education, as well as an expression of the fact that I see not only what she is trying to do, but who she is. I allow myself to be so vulnerable at this academic gathering and over this live web stream <laughs> to emphasize this idea of the center of the civic let us remember in our work to truly see each other as we respond to our urgent needs. And at the same time, while the seeing and the feeling is important, albeit often neglected, it is in no way sufficient. Note that the song was a farewell song. Leaders change, folks. And while we do well to celebrate leaders, we also must understand that the current state of publicly engaged scholarship and the civic field requires that we move beyond our penchant for fixation on charismatic leaders toward instead to increasingly multidimensional, multi-level, ameliorative approaches within academe for the purpose of cultivating and nurturing the democracy we need. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Tim. And thanks to all three of you for being good sports um, and putting up with the smart Alex and hecklers in the crowd. In other words, me. But, uh, uh, I should have mentioned before, one other person who was going to be with us tonight, Abi Namani, couldn't uh, come. He is one of the co-founders of Code for America and really writing some really interesting stuff. If you, if you Google his name and you, and you got his spelling there on your, your um, programs, he's been writing some really interesting stuff about civic technology and how it fits into civic infrastructure. Um, and it's just um, some really good stuff. Uh, he, unfortunately, though, he sustained a head injury last week. He's fine, but he's not able to travel so that's why he wasn't uh, able to come. We'll have him come next year. Um, talk amongst yourselves. We gave you topics, um, and uh, go forth.